Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Claire Ackers here, coming to you live from Sunnybank Mills in Farsley. Today we are talking about seven ways to make changes, positive habit changes, stick permanently. So this is for you if you are struggling to make good habits stick, or if you are doubting your ability to make those positive changes permanent in your life. Um, And if you are, it is no surprise because the odds are absolutely stacked against you. I'm sorry to say it, but the very way, the very fabric of our society, of our economy, of our political system, of our school's infrastructure is set up to make it blooming hard for you to make those changes permanently. Um, It's exhausting, right? It is absolutely exhausting trying to make changes. Um, And all it does is it traps you in a loop, a never ending, perpetuating loop um, of big dreams to massive action uh, to failure. And then the cycle repeats again and again and again. This is why the troubleshoot and transform module that I teach is so, so important and so, so impactful. And it blows my clients' minds wide open that they have just been struggling for so long. But if you just know these uh, know these tips, know these tools, then that permanent change becomes so much easier. And dare I say, joyful. It just puts you in the driving seat of the changes that you want to make. So in today's coaching session, I want to share with you seven tips. Seven tips that are going to put you permanently in the, sorry, put you, um, in the driving seat of those changes that you want to make uh, to make sure that those new habits, those changes stick permanently. My name is Claire Ackers. I am an authenticity coach. I help female entrepreneurs and female leaders um, solve their origin story paradigm and achieve authentic self-mastery so they can have more fulfillment, more joy, more satisfaction in their businesses and more wealth as well. And this is actually my second attempt at delivering this conversation today, because the first time I did it, there was something wrong with my streaming software, and it didn't work. Um, However, I'm trying again, it's just gone 10 o'clock, and the snow's just started. I don't know if you can see it over my shoulder there, if you're watching the the video of this, Uh, but the snow has just started, and I just think it's serendipity. We were waiting for the snow to start to have this conversation today. So let me start by telling you a story. My youngest child, Bobby, she's four, she wakes up in an absolute rage. She is not one of these kids who wakes up and they're all, ah, sunshine and light and looking forward to the day. She wakes up angry with the world. You know, she's got some existential angst going on. And she she's up on the, uh, the third floor and she comes stomping down the stairs to my and my husband's bedroom. And you can see her in the doorway. You know, she is grumpy. She is angry with the world. Um, and she gets into bed with us and she demands our attention. And one of my, yeah, my favorite part of the day is um, my 6 a.m. coffee with my husband. We He brings me a coffee in bed every morning. I know, right? Uh, it's 6 a.m. and we sit there and we just, we start the day gently and we talk about what we've going on, we've got going on, and we talk about any kind of logistical stuff so we don't drop any balls, which works most of the time. And it's a lovely, lovely way to start the day. And then Bobby arrives and she is angry with the world and she gets in, she climbs over us, she gets in the middle, shoves us away from each other if we dared to touch each other. Um, And she demands a cuddle from me, not from my husband, she wants it from me, uh, and she demands her cup of milk and she sits there and she has her milk and then very, very slowly and gently she warms up and she wakes up and all is right with the world. Um... But it got me thinking, when we try to make changes, when we try to instill positive habits, when we try to level up, it is like that four-year-old is running the show, right? Um, Just like Bobby, that four-year-old inside you is unreasonable. 
and fearful and she demands attention and if she doesn't get her way she is determined to make things unpleasant until she does does this sound familiar to anybody and this is exactly why permanent change is so hard because often that four-year-old rins right let me tell you the story of the goo and the butterfly and I tell this all the time so forgive me if you've heard it from me before and it comes from that um that Robin Sharma quote, um, that change is hard at the beginning, messy in the middle. Oh my gosh, it's messy and gorgeous at the end. So the story of the butterfly, everybody knows how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. It's that story by Eric Carle, isn't it, that you heard when you were a kid. Um, the caterpillar builds a cocoon and stays inside for more than two weeks. And when it emerges, it is a beautiful butterfly. But here's the thing. Here's what most people don't know. Is that in order to become that butterfly, the caterpillar inside the cocoon needs to break itself down into literal goo. It is a messy, sticky, horrible mess inside there. There is only a couple of cells of encoded information that then allow the caterpillar to rebuild itself and metamorphosize and transform and transmute itself, alchemize, if you like, to become that beautiful butterfly. And so when we are making those changes, when we are going through trying to instill those positive habits, habits, there is a goo phase where it feels messy, it feels too hard, it feels like that four-year-old is, is taking over and we're hitting up against roadblock against roadblock and it just seems easier to chuck everything out and go back to the way that we were, even if it's not serving us. And so this is the first thing I want you to know, um, is that if you are going through the goo phase, the messy middle phase, and you are struggling to make those habits and changes stick, keep going because it is going to be gorgeous at the end. So the objective of today's coaching session is to give you those seven tips, those seven valuable tips about how you can get through that goo phase and achieve that gorgeous at the end phase. Because you've done the hard bit. You've done the hard bit, which is admitting you want things to be different. You've set the goals, you've done an audit of your life and realized that there's some things that need to change and that is the hard bit. So just keep on going. Okay, tip number one is think of it like Mount Everest. Now, if you went straight away and you tried to go and climb Mount Everest, you would die because of oxygen deprivation. You couldn't do it. And so what you need to do is acclimatize. You need to acclimatize. So what people do is they go to base camp. They start at base camp and they spend some time there and they get used to the levels of oxygen. They spend some time acclimatizing. And once they have done that, they can get to the next level, acclimatize there. Once they've done that, they can get to the next level and acclimatize there. Now, I don't know enough about climbing Everest to uh, continue this metaphor. However, you get the point. Baby steps. Don't try and do it all at once. You're going to get overwhelmed, find it's too hard and give up. Keep supplying, keep feeding, keep nurturing that oxygen supply. Hope that makes sense. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is throw everything at it. Throw everything you possibly can at this habit change. Um, and what I mean by that is to flood your subconscious with anchors, with reinforcing messages about the new habit that you are nurturing. For example, on my phone, I have used Canva to create a backdrop that reinforces, has a positive message about that new habit that I am forming. So every single time I look at my phone, I'm getting that message into my brain that that is what I want to do. You can't see behind my computer screen, which is great because it is a mess in here right now because of some changes we are making. Um, but if you could, you would see on my monitor, 
There are tokens. There are things that remind me of the person that I'm becoming. Um, there are post-its everywhere. There are post-its in my fridge. There are post-its on the mirror that remind me, those positive anchors wherever I am in my office that are reminding me of the changes I'm making. The song that wakes me up in the morning is um, a, a song that reminds me of the um, of the changes that I am making. Now, I'm going to share it with you. This is properly cheesy and, and, and you'll definitely be able to age me when I tell you this, but it is, it is um, It's My Life by Bon Jovi. Love that song. So when I wake up in the morning, the first message I hear is one that supports that new habit that I am forming. So have a think about how you can flood your environment uh, and make it just part of who you are, that new habit that you are forming. So that is tip number two. Tip number three is beware of the willpower trap. Now, if you are interested in this idea, go and read The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. He talks about upper limits. It's an upper limit problem where willpower does not work. And the idea is that you have an internal thermostat about what you will and will not tolerate. And when you hit up against that upper limit, your internal thermostat cannot uh, countenance, cannot tolerate that new level. And so something happens to... um, to to sabotage and bring you back within that internal thermostat. Weight gain, weight loss is a classic example of this. Another example of this is uh, lottery winners. Have you ever heard of lottery winners who win millions and then spend it on stupid stuff? You just absolutely blow that money and end up absolutely skint again because they, they can't tolerate being that wealthy. So it's the same idea. Um, beware of willpower. It's like smoking, trying to give up smoking. You're like, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. And then something happens. Willpower is just a sticking plaster because it doesn't address the underlying problem. Um, And so that willpower can only take you so far. And you've got to have a, um, a different mindset, a different attitude to the change. Which brings me to tip number four, which is perhaps my favorite one, which is understanding your origin story paradigm. I'm going to say that again because it is vital to making these habits stick. It is understanding your origin story paradigm. And what this basically is, is being able to understand who you are at your core before the world told you who to be. There will have been something that happened to you when you were a kid between the ages of five and seven. Um, An incident, an experience, a, a thing that happened to you. It could be a trauma with a big T or a small T, but something that happened to you that kickstarted your origin story paradigm. And since then, you have been living out that story. Something like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. uh, Imposter syndrome. I don't fit. I don't belong. All that stuff. That is your origin story paradigm. And you can only achieve um, to the level that you believe you can to the level, uh, to that upper limit that that origin story paradigm has allowed you to. And so if you are really, really going to achieve those new habits and and those new new changes that you want to instill, you've got to look at your origin story paradigm and look at where it is limiting you. And there's just that conflict with this, this new identity, this identity shift that you are trying to achieve. And just reconnect with who you are at your core. You know, that beautiful, that joyful, that curious, that fun, that pure, amazing human that you are at your core. Reconnect with that fire and who you are. And habits become easy to change. And then tip number five is thinking about and being aware of sabotage, particularly self-sabotage. Uh, sabotage is where you have a, um, a limited amount of results and you're like, yeah, I've nailed it. This is easy. I've done this. And then something happens to go wrong. Either you mess something up, that is self-sabotage, or somebody crawls out of the woodwork to, to stop you in your tracks. And this could be conscious or it could be subconscious, but the sabotage means that you think it's too hard. 
I can't do it. It's not available for somebody like me. This is just who I am. I can't do it. And you just give up and go back to that old familiar pattern, even if it is not serving you. Because when we make changes, it's like you have kicked a riverbed and there is silt flying about all over the shop. So everything is a little bit squiffy. Um, And so if you are aware of the sabotage and you can recognize it and call it out for what it is, then it doesn't need to stop you. You can keep on being pulled towards making those changes and be aware of that little voice, that imposter, that saboteur, recognize it as a friend, as something that is just trying to keep you safe and in the familiar and carry on making those changes regardless. Hopefully that makes sense because it is really, really important. And then tip number six is being mindful of your thoughts, constant vigilance. Um, And the question is, what am I making this mean? When something happens, whether it is a trigger or whether it is a glimmer, um, being think, uh, thinking of what am I making this mean? What narrative, what story, what meaning am I attaching to this situation? Um, really quick and dirty way to do this is to, if you are triggered by a situation, maybe you're in a meeting, uh, maybe you have had some really bad news and your flight or fight mechanism kicks in, that four-year-old kicks in and is running the show, you know, your nervous system is all over the shop, you're having real physical and physiological reactions to that situation, Um, look at the back of your hand. Because if you look at the back of your hand, all your brain can think about is, oh, look, there's the back of my hand. Um, I got this one from Mel Robbins, by the way. Look at the back of your hand and it just gives you that Split, split seconds clarity to choose differently. It's that consciousness, right? It's that um, awareness that you are not your thoughts. It's that curious observer. This is one of the techniques I teach, the, the curious observer technique. It's to recognize that you are the sky and your thoughts are like little puffs of cloud just passing by. They don't need to change you. They don't need to change fundamentally who you are. They are just there to be observed and released if they are not serving you. Important, that one. Hopefully that makes sense. And then when you're being mindful of your thoughts as well, I love this idea by James Clear, being really, um, in his book, um, Atomic Habits, if you haven't read that, go and read it immediately. Consider your micro habits and consider identity-based goals. It just takes the pressure off. Now, the whole idea of this micro habits is that um, all you need to think about in every single split second decision, every choice you are presented with is, is this course of action taking me towards the person I want to be or away from the person I want to be? And then you've got a choice, right? Haven't you? And in just that little question, you are able to vote, to cast a vote for the kind of person that you want to be. Now, the empowering part of this idea is that you don't need to get it right 100% of the time. All you need is a majority. 51% of the time, you need to have a vote for the kind of person that you want to be. And that creates an identity shift. Awesome, right? And then finally, step number seven, uh, sorry, tip number seven is to spend just five minutes a day in the energy of the person that you're becoming. Now, if we go back to that that quote from the start from Robin Sharma, that change is hard at first, messy in the middle and gorgeous at the end. It's stepping into the energy of it being gorgeous at the end. So take some time to really get clear on what that gorgeous means for you when you have instilled these habits, when you have made these changes. Who do you want to be? How do you want to show up in the world? How do you want to walk in the room? How do you want people to talk about you? What impact do you want to be having? And how do you want to feel when you have proven that you were so, so justified in making these changes and proving that you can step into this identity of this next level you? And once you're clear on what that is, spend five minutes a day in this energy. Revel in it. Take your time. Just bask and celebrate in this next level identity that you're becoming. Because here's the thing, 
your subconscious mind cannot distinguish between what is real and what is imaginary. Now, this can count against us. Sorry, this can count against us if it's um, if it's a perceived threat. So there is a negative side to this, but the positive side of this is that if you spend just five minutes visualizing, your mind will start to accept this as fact. And that's when you're going to get the gorgeous ideas. That's when you're going to get the inspiration. That is where you're going to get the aligned pull towards making those changes stick. So these are the seven tips that I want to share about how to make changes permanent, about how to make habits stick. Let me know which is your favorite. Let me know how you get on. Thank you for being here and I will see you very soon.